Hello. And just like that, the end of May is approaching. <laughs> Time flies so fast. And oh, welcome to Taurus season, uh, a time where you be chilling, be enjoying life, going vacations. Mm -hmm. I'm still very surprised that people still go on vacations. But you do you, boo. I don't know, because I can't speak of well, every part of the world. But it is Taurus season and... Uh, some people like to see Netflix and chill. I'm pretty sure whoever invented that quote was probably a Taurus. My opposite. <laughs> but I, I've been chilling too. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Stardew Valley lately. <laughs> I don't know why. Just out of the moon. and It's a pretty chill game. Like farming. and uh, There's a lot more to that game than just farming though. Anyway. Uh... Uh, on the 13th, like Muslims around the world, they celebrate the Eid, or in my language, we call it Hari Raya Ayodhya Fitri. It's basically like uh, Christmas, but for Muslims. Uh, is that controversial to say? Except that Eid is not celebrating the birth of our Prophet, it's more of uh, celebrating uh, one month after one month of Ramadan, which is fasting from sunrise to sunset. <laughs> I'm trying to directly translate it. Uh, if that's correct, I'm not sure. But for me, it's more like from 6 to 7 plus minus. Because I know it can be different from other parts of the world depending how the sun, how the sun what time the sun decides to uh, set. Anyway, and I I do love Ramadan. Ramadan in general is my favorite month in the Islamic calendar. And I learned to appreciate it a bit later in life because, you know, uh, what we learn about Ramadan in school or in university, for me, is more of being mindful of those less uh, fortunate. It's also the month where so many people give away food, uh, a lot of charities. And I don't mean like we don't do charities in other parts of the year. It's just me. It was more concentrated in the month of Ramadan. People are more uh, relaxed and focused more on healing. So it's also good for detoxing yourself for one month after 11 months eating garbage. <laughs> it's also... Because to me, like... You know, there's five pillars of Islam. It's like Shahada, Shahada is declaring you're a Muslim. And then prayers five times a day. Prayers to me is like meditation and exercise, a form of exercise if you do it right. But mostly it's for meditation. And it's supposed to be reminding you to take a chill pill, like chill out, don't need to work so hard all the time. And I think zakat is like tax, but... Zakat is specifically only seven people are allowed to receive it. And there's a list, you can Google it. But mostly focused on those who are poor or whether they just converted to Islam, those who manage funds, those who do a lot of things related to charity. So it's tax, but more focused to a certain group of people. And then there's Hajj, which is more about connecting with people around the world, basically. And I think my approach to religion in general is attributed to my family. I think I am privileged enough to grow up with a family that has a more philosophical approach to it. What I mean is they practice it out of their own choice, not because of society pressure, which I appreciate a lot. So by a typical Muslim Malaysian standard, I wouldn't consider myself religious. But do I do a lot of spiritual practice? I do. <laughs> like, But for me, it's more of a protection because I am actually very sensitive to energy so and more inclined to deal with a lot of psychic attacks. So to me, to me, the Quran verses are more as a shield, protection to those bad things. 
because ultimately the Quran, the Arabic verse, not really the translated ones, has a power, you know, if you believe in it, like, uh, it's more of whatever, the Quranic verse in Arabic is like words of God, so the understanding is those entities are afraid of the creator, right? Because only human being has free will <laughs> when the rest doesn't. So that's why we have a lot of interesting people throughout the world with different sets of beliefs and way of life, which I find it to be very interesting. Anyway, so that's Ramadan and that's it. Uh, I celebrate. Um, I have a relatives nearby where I live. So usually just there. My family is still <laughs> all over the world. <laughs> and they're still healthy and fine. Very grateful for that. We have not seen each other for a couple of years now. <laughs> At least for me, because I've been living life like a hermit for a while now. At least for the last five years. Five years is long enough. <laughs> Because I, who, who would have anticipated COVID to happen? And thank God there's video calls, right? Like a lot of times I'm just, whenever I'm feeling whiny, <laughs> I always remind myself that I am actually born at the right place at the right time, at the right generation. Because though I really appreciate, I, re I do appreciate technology in a sense where you can be connected anywhere, anytime. So, though I miss my family, I'm glad that we have a way of communicating with each other and everyone is all right and I'm just grateful for that. Mm, the COVID situation here is challenging right now. I think Malaysia did super well in early 2020. And now we're going through one of those challenging phases, you know. It's always a balance thing for me. <laughs> Sometimes things, when it's good, then it will, we have to go through the bad moments and then it will be good again, you know. And I know all, all around the internet, a lot of people are celebrating having their vaccine shots. Uh, good for you. Um, over here, I think people living in the capital city uh, prioritize right now because of the cases there is pretty, pretty bad. But I live like way outside <laughs> from the capital city, so I don't think anyone around the area has received the vaccine yet. For me, mm, I have not registered yet. I know because partly I'm trying to prioritize the elderly. It's also out of pure intuition. I think uh, for me, it might be like a bit late later next year after we settle the high risk folks first yeah i do look forward to it i feel like since i'm all i don't go out that much anyway apart from essential needs i'm doing all right for myself but for those frontliners or people who uh, i don't know <laughs> just need to socialize i guess I would prefer them to be vaccinated <laughs> because they have more contact with the outside world. Otherwise, my view on the vaccine is there's still not much information yet. But do I feel that people should get the vaccine? Yeah, you should. But uh, I, I prefer more time though. That's my personal choice though. Even... It will be at the right time. I know. I know what happened. But I'm I'm pro at getting a vaccine. It's just uh I will wait it out first until that I know a lot of my elderly are safe first. Yeah. Anyway. Hmm. This video is about quarterly reflections, <laughs> but we're already almost at the end of May. Time really flies by. Uh, just in the last few months, a lot of things has happened in my personal life. Like my dad just recently retired. <laughs> I think my stepmom got laid off, and then I am in the process of closing my company of six years. 
So <laughs> my family has a very interesting dynamic where like cases, situation like this where we should be panicking we, for some reason we so chill out. But then when things shouldn't be like small things tend to be like a big deal sometimes for them. I don't understand it. They can get a bit over dramatic about the little things, but when things like out of proportion right now, and suddenly everyone is a, in a Zen space. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm glad though that nobody's panicking. But it is a financial concern nonetheless. Like I'm closing my company. It's a small business. I'm doing management and financial. I have an accounting background. And I think uh, for me, the reason I created my own company was because it was the time when my mom was diagnosed with cancer. So I had to quit my job and cannot rely on her salary when she got sick to pay the bills. So I decided to create a firm of my own. And it's just a small firm, but I did my best. It was great the first three years, but it was challenging on the last three. The reason I closed it is because I couldn't, I couldn't commit to the salary of my employees anymore. And it was hard to let go though, because I know it's tough times and I'm not one of those people who, I still have a soul. <laughs> so. It was a tough decision for me as well, but I I also look at my bank balance and realize that I can't keep uh helping them. So I wish them well though. It, it's not just that; it's also that you've invested your time to train and build trust with these people. It's kind of not an easy thing to let go, but in the end, I just I I think it's the best time as well for me to figure out what else I want to do with my life because it was not it was struggling to make ends meet uh, to me if you have maybe it's just Malaysia but if you have big companies you are likely to survive the pandemic because you have investors but for the small ones a lot of since I, I take care of the accounts right a lot of small businesses have closed down just in the past year that's unfortunate to see because they don't have investors to back their business. Even then, it's understandable why they would close it now because the climate of the market is changing, you know. Now, everything is online, things are more in demand. So every time I go out to buy groceries, I can see a lot of shops closing down, which is why back in my video, uh, Welcome Me 2021, I talk about this dystopian future approaching because I can see it happening. Even then, and uh, more people would be more in tune with online. And hence, I quoted, uh, I, I mentioned the movie Ready Player One. And it's really happening. Everyone is just online now. And it's a it's a good opportunity for those to explore that, but it will also be a challenging for those who are not ready for it. Even then, you have to count your losses and see what works right now. It's interesting how the world can just instantly change, isn't it? But I think to me, my life my life alone has been a constant. Uh, major shifts, <laughs> extreme end. So it's as if I was prepared for it, for this pandemic. And I'm glad that I'm chill about it because I am more inclined to be anxiety driven. <laughs> I mean, the whole 2020 was tough for my anxiety levels. And then this year, though I should be worried about the situation here, I'm actually more calm about it, especially since a lot of people <laughs> like my dad, my stepmom and me are financially not having the income coming in right now. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know. 
it does give me the opportunity to focus on other things that I could not focus to before, like writing. It, it made me realize that one thing that I ever do for most part of my life was writing. I just never see it as a form of monetary thing. I don't even know if it's going to work out, but a lot of other things that I'm able to do kind of stuck now, so I should probably focus on what works. I do like to create... I don't know. I, I'm at least glad that I'm a millennial that grew up with YouTube, you know what I mean? <laughs> Because it's kind of hard. Even uh, I've been encouraging people to be YouTubers for the past three years. People around me. Because at the time, I kind of see that YouTube in Mish is going to pick up back then. Like how the start in America, right? When you have Smosh or uh, Ryan Higa. It started to pick up here uh, three years ago. So I, I kind of see that pattern. So... I was encouraging a lot of people I know to start doing YouTube. For the very least, this is before I even anticipated COVID was happening. I, I didn't even know COVID was happening. Nobody does, I think. But back then, it's just do it for the sheer skill that you need to at least know a certain level of editing or just to build confidence to garner online audience. Because confidence in real life and confidence online is actually not the same you know because you can be confident online but it doesn't change the fact that you may be still an awkward human being face to face <laughs> like I'm not necessarily an awkward human being face to face but I uh, because I'm not used to speaking to a, a non-visible audience it, it's like it it's, takes a while for me to get used to it it's still I still cringe deal with it <laughs> But like when facing people, it's more, it's more organic. It depends also the type of people, right? There's people that I would vibe with. There's people I would rather just shut up and do my own thing. <laughs> so there's that. Like two years ago, I was encouraged people to do that just to at least have a taste of the online world. And I, now I know why. <laughs> because I do it out of just because back then as well, the Malaysian economy was struggling pretty badly. Uh, like my my family was really hit badly in 2018. And then some of them chose to find work overseas because the Malaysian market was already starting to become stagnant for certain industries. And... Now they're coming back though, so because the economy is actually improving over here, so those who venture out is coming back. You know, I think for Malaysians, I don't know, I can't speak for everyone, but for me, I've traveled to a few places around the world. I still feel there's no place like home, you know, <laughs> it's a cliche word, isn't it? Because it's a certain lifestyle that you have grew up with to be familiar with. And I don't know for those who decide, who's lived overseas that long and decide to come back, why they will come back. And then some of them say it's because of family. I think maybe that the pandemic really has opened our eyes to a lot of things. And it's cool, you know, because the world was getting more depressed, <laughs> right? And to me, like, when, once you're in that phase, state of mind, you kind of will keep searching for meaning. And usually, to some people, meaning would be uh, something spiritual. Others, I don't know, it can be anything else. But for the most part, are we as humanity elevating to a certain level of understanding that, yeah, not to take a lot of things for granted? I think so. Of course, we are never perfect as a civilization. Like, it saddens that upon Eid, that some uh, some people could not celebrate it. And I'll just put it at that. Because it has been controversial for the longest time. <laughs> In an ideal world, there will be no more. In an ideal world, 
nobody has to suffer. Even then, I think, if anything, COVID has opened our eyes is towards a lot of things that we've learned to appreciate now. And not to take our life for granted. But I'm learning that though. I've been, for the first 20 years of my life, I was more a go, go, go sort of person, never take a break. But that's also based on like the home I grew up with. Pretty much I grew up really comfortable and safe. It's just chaotic because divorce. <laughs> Grew up with divorced parents. It was always constant fighting. So I would rather be anywhere but home. And then after my mom passed away, though it was really tragic and sad, I kind of find peace of mind. Where chaos still ensues, but at least I can be in a place where I feel safe. And I think over the years, even my family grow more mature. I don't know what the word is. I think as we get older, we more chill. <laughs> is the word. And like I, uh, it's hard for me. Hmm, how do I put it? I'm one of those people who appreciate. Uh, who appreciate my family from a distance. Because. I don't know. Some people can function in chaos. I think I, even though I do very well in chaos, I also struggle emotionally with it because I am the sort of child that require nurture. Because I couldn't say the same for everyone else. Because my sister can function just fine because her, she she's a Capricorn. She's an Earth sign. So for her, it's more safety. And money. <laughs> so that's her love language. <laughs> but for me, I'm a Scorpio water sign. Uh, I require a lot of nurture. And, and I'm not a codependent person per se. I am more. Uh, if nurture is not provided, then I wouldn't hold on to it, to those people sort of thing. Yeah? So if because, it, I don't know, children, I have a soft, soft spot in my heart. I, I cannot stand watching broken children. Because it will always remind me of me. Yeah. So I can, I don't know, if you decide, I'm rambling, by the way. <laughs> if you decide to be parents, have a certain basic knowledge of love languages and even watching my sister raising her son has been delightful though because it was something so unfamiliar and I am so grateful that he was raised full of love full of love and uh, support because it was something very unfamiliar to me to my sister to my brother Whatever it is, I think, whatever we do, we, the car, the generations that has existed, do it for the next one. <laughs> Even if it's not your direct, direct kin. <laughs> and I think that's what, uh, among all those things that I reflect upon COVID situation. And for the quarter of almost half yearly of 2021, it is kind of exciting to see what's going to happen in the future, actually. It's like, for the very least, I want the frontliners to have a deserving rest and peace of mind. I don't think any of us could ever return their service. The best we can do is just be kind and give them, send them lots of love, support and prayers. They deserve the rest, man. It is a Virgo year, right? And Virgo frontliners, medical doctors, all are Virgo energy. They're saving lives. People who they didn't even know, people they don't even have to care about, are sacrificing their own time with their families. Think about that, you know? 
before we decide to just be selfish about our own life. Think about them. Yeah. Grateful. A lot of things to be grateful for. And I do look forward to the future. I hope 2022 has more exciting things. I don't know if it's going to be a Libra year. Though, because it... Yeah. And me and transits. I used to be good at it. Just I, I stopped caring. <laughs> so, I'll see what the astrologers will say. We will say soon though. I don't know if it's going to be Libra year. Because it's 2022, right? Two, 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 two. Libra loves those things. Ah, oh, love. <laughs> Love. Oh, music. Coachella. Libra with the beauty. Coupling. Everyone's divorcing and finding new partners. Because <laughs> Libra is uh, marriage energy. Oh, God. And then, oh, all these beautiful things. <laughs> because Virgo energy is not for everyone. This year is about detoxing, man. Clean out all the bad things. Get it out because it will be, uh, it will be removed from your life anyway. And it's also the thing, I joke with my Virgo cousin, that, hey, this is a Virgo, yeah, yeah, this is your time to shine. And she was like, oh, finally. <laughs> finally, it's my year. I wish you the best, Virgos. All the frontliners, and God bless you. The world will always need Virgos, man. You, you guys, make sure that everyone keeps growing. You know, because some of us just want to watch the world burn. <laughs> it's more fun. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, not all of us is helping the cause, right? Some of us just creating trouble. But ultimately, everyone is ultimately interesting to see. So I'm rambling as F right <laughs> But here's my quarterly reflections. I hope everything works out over there, wherever you are. Wish you all the best. And take care. Bye-bye.